This is San Diego News Daily. I'm Monica Dean. Let's get right into your top local stories. We are following early results of the special election involving three races. First, the race for San Diego County Supervisor in District 4. The seat has been vacant for about six months after Nathan Fletcher resigned amid sexual assault allegations. D4 voters say there were many issues that factored into their decision about who to vote for. Well, I'm most interested in the housing. I'm very interested in the homeless. I see it in my front door out my home, which I've never seen before. And they're harmless people. They're just on the streets living. But um, that and the border. Those are my two things, homeless and the open borders. San Diego City Council member Mon Monica Montgomery Stepp has a significant lead over Amy Reichert, the founder of Reopen San Diego. Stepp with 61% of the vote to Reichert's 39%. Reichert released a statement this morning saying, quote, while the results may indicate that victory in this election remains unattainable, my resolve to enhance the prosperity of San Diego County remains resolute. Chula Vista is voting on a new city attorney. That seat was won by Simon Silva last year, but he died two months before the election. Three candidates are now in the running. Former city attorney Bart Meisfield holds a slight lead. 39% of the vote to Marco Verdugo's 38%. Trailing in third is Dan Smith Diaz. One of the three candidates needs a simple majority to win. Otherwise, the top two candidates will have a runoff election in another special election next year. And voters in Fallbrook and Rainbow are deciding if they want to break away from the San Diego Water Authority. In Fallbrook, the yes vote is at 94%. And then in Rainbow, 95%. Anyone caught distributing what's being called hate litter in Poway will now face a stiff fine and possibly prison time. Poway city leaders just passed an ordinance banning the public distribution of flyers or other materials aimed at intimidating, harassing or threatening any protected group. And as NBC7's Audra Stafford explains, it went into effect immediately. Poway Mayor Steve Voss proposed this as an urgency ordinance, meaning it doesn't require any further action from the council or a 30 day waiting period. And the council approved it unanimously last night during their meeting here at Poway City Hall. We said it back in April of 2019 when the Chabad tragedy took place. Hate has no place in Poway. That still stands today. Before the vote, Mayor Voss emphasized that the ordinance will not just protect our Jewish neighbors, but all protected classes as defined by federal and state law. Under the ordinance, anyone responsible for so-called hate litter will face six months in prison, a thousand dollar fine or both. The ordinance comes after anti-Semitic flyers were found in several neighborhoods around San Diego County, including the area around Chabad of Poway. And I was shocked to learn that even if the perpetrators had been caught, they'd have gotten a slap on the wrist at best. I strongly believe we need to implement penalties to discourage such cowardly acts. Send a clear message that hate litter that's intended to frighten, intimidate, or harass members of any protected class will not be tolerated. The rest of the council agreed. I do think it's clearly important that we take a, a hard stand against this type of um, despicable behavior. I, I think it's it's a shame that we even have to talk about this, um, but I appreciate bringing it forward as an urgency ordinance because there is a sense of urgency. Mayor Voss said Poway is the first city in the county to approve such an ordinance. San Diego City Council member Raul Campillo is working on a similar ordinance and he hopes to bring it to a vote within the next couple of months. From Poway, I'm Audra Stafford, NBC7. Meteorologist Sheena Parveen joins us now with a look at your forecast. Hi, Sheena. Hey, Monica, as we head through the afternoon, we're going to have some Santa Ana conditions in the forecast. That's going to warm us up inland around 77 for a high. So it's going to be a little breezy for the mountains and foothills. Mostly we'll see winds around about 25 miles per hour. So the stronger winds are going to stay north of San Diego County in the drier air also staying uh, mostly north. We're still going to have an elevated fire threat, though, and those Santa Ana conditions actually continue tomorrow. Inland will be around 82 Friday around 80 this weekend, a week Santa Ana, so we're still going to be warm. Back the record rebound we're seeing as the local industry recovers from pandemic loads. 
Looking for NBC San Diego on Roku? The easiest way to find us is with Roku voice commands. Just press the microphone button on your remote and say live TV and then say NBC San Diego. If you don't have voice commands on your remote, just scroll down to live TV, click the purple icon, go over to the left and navigate to news. Then head on down to NBC San Diego News. Once you've got us, make sure you add us to your favorites and we'll always be right there for you. NBC San Diego News on Roku. This is San Diego News Daily. I'm Monica Dean. Welcome back. County leaders are looking for an outside opinion on San Diego's homeless strategy. They voted unanimously to bring in a third party consultant to do an assessment. The goal identify any gaps in services and get recommendations. County leaders say the push for an assessment follows the most recent point in time count, which identified more than 10,000 people living either on the streets or in shelters. It marked a 22% increase over the previous year. Meanwhile, county leaders also approved a plan to develop a pilot program to help people suffering from substance abuse and housing insecurity. The, the program would target roughly 100 people in the North County. Supervisor Jim Desmond, who brought the plan before the board, says he hopes it will eventually expand countywide. According to his office, more than one third of the people in our county experiencing homelessness suffer from addiction, and many remain homeless despite receiving treatment. San Diego's libraries are about to get one of their biggest overhauls in decades. This week, the city approved a new library master plan. Libraries that neighbor throughout neighbor in neighborhoods throughout would close like the ones in Rolando uh, that will instead have new roofs, AC, electrical work, all those things done. And Blueprint calls for three brand new 25,000 square foot libraries, one in Mira Mesa, Claremont and Otay Mesa. Eight other locations would be totally rebuilt. Seven other branches would see a major expansion. The city is also looking to work libraries into mixed use housing and commercial projects to better serve the community. Overnight, firefighters were still on the scene at the Tustin hangar destroyed by yesterday's early morning fire. Investigators still don't know what caused the destruction here on the historic Orange County landmark. A 2010 documentary, Tustin Hangers, Titans of History, tells the story of two of the largest wood frame structures ever built. Construction started shortly after the attack on Pearl Harbor amid concerns of a Japanese invasion of the West Coast. The Navy came up with a plan that there was going to be a squadron of blimps that were going to patrol the West Coast from Seattle to San Diego 24 hours a day. They needed um, hangars to house those blimps. In the 1990s, the 17 story tall hangars were turned over to the city of Tustin and the county of Orange by the Pentagon. The hangars were frequently used in movies from Star Trek to Austin Powers. We'll have a look at your weather forecast right after this. NBC7 and Telemundo 20 Response is dedicated to helping you. You guys were able to get a different result. I have so much gratitude. Whether it's in Spanish or English. We're one team. One team. Investigating, getting answers, making sure every phone call, every email gets a response. Because this isn't just our job. This is our community too. And we're here to help. NBC7 and Telemundo 20 Response. One team fighting for you and your money. Hi there, I'm NBC7 meteorologist Sheena Parveen. For today, we're going to have some Santa Ana conditions in the forecast. So it's going to be drier. It'll be sunny. We'll have a breezy east wind for mountains and foothills. A little bit warmer for the inland valleys around 77. Around the low 70s at the coast, mountains will be near 60 degrees with those offshore winds, which will continue tomorrow too. So tomorrow we're going to be a little warmer than today. Friday, we cool down just slightly because we have a little onshore flow developing. Over the weekend, some weak Santa Anas. And then next week, we have some rain chances. Thank you, Sheena. Tourism plays a major role in San Diego's economy, but with the pandemic and stormy weather, the last few years have been kind of rough. However, it appears things are turning around. The head of the San Diego Tourism Authority says visitors spent more than $14 billion in the San Diego region this past fiscal year. At the peak of the pandemic, that number was about $5 billion. It's just so gorgeous and everybody's just so friendly. It's a nice area here. It's beautiful. Beautiful. Beautiful, and um, I like the weather. 
We do too. And the Tourism Authority says it expects even more recovery with the return of events like Kaboo and the Farmers Insurance Open. More coverage you count on at NBC7.com. Thanks for watching.